In the previous concept you studied electric charge. In this concept you study about conductors and insulators. Conductors and insulators. A metal rod held in hand and rubbed with wool will not show any sign of being charged. However, if a metal rod with a wooden or plastic handle is rubbed without touching its metal part, it shows signs of charging. Suppose we connect one end of a copper wire to a neutral pith ball and the other end to a negatively charged plastic rod. We will find that the pith ball acquires a negative charge. If a similar experiment is repeated with a nylon thread or a rubber band, no transfer of charge will take place from the plastic rod to the pith ball. Why does the transfer of charge not take place from the rod to the ball? Some substances readily allow passage of electricity through them, others do not. Those which allow electricity to pass through them easily are called conductors. They have electric charges, electrons, that are comparatively free to move inside the material. Metals, human and animal bodies, and earth are conductors. Most of the non-metals, like glass, porcelain, plastic, nylon, wood, offer high resistance to the passage of electricity through them. They are called insulators. When some charge is transferred to a conductor, it readily gets distributed over the entire surface of the conductor. It contrasts if some charge is put on an insulator. It stays at the same place. When we bring a charged body in contact with the earth, all the excess charge on the body disappears by causing a momentary current to pass to the ground through the connecting conductor, such as our body. This process of sharing the charges with the earth is called grounding or earthing. Earthing provides a safety measure for electrical circuits and appliances. There is a third category called semiconductors, which offer resistance to the movement of charges which is intermediate between the conductors and insulators.